this shave uh, will feature the hardware of the Gillette Silver Blue Stainless and a butterfly twist to open uh, 1948 or 49 Gillette uh, Super Speed back then they just made great razors and a lot of them can be had now at antique stores and eBay and all that for the same price as some some current razors and these the quality here sometimes is just a much better this razor is new to me so this is its maiden voyage we put the uh, silver silver blue in there tighten it down and this is the fourth use of this blade it's been great so far uh, my Edwin Jagger 89 uh, did not on the third use it didn't do all as well as the uh, the first two uses uh, heard great things about this um, this particular razor so I'm looking forward to trying it out other hardware soap bowl um, the previous three uses of this blade have been with my modified plastic bowl it's got grooves that I put in it uh, the uh, software for this is the Prix de Provence number 63 shaving soap and I did not get a good initial lather out of it partly because I was trying to work my bore brush uh, it's not broken in yet by any means and uh, it just wasn't holding very much soap and I, I don't know whether I got the soap and water mixture right uh, with the plastic bowl maybe it was aerating it too much I want to go back to my old standard for this run the soap has been blooming it smells great it's a sophisticated scent um, I didn't smell some of the musky attributes until I had it mixed up in the bowl I didn't smell it when it was dry and uh, I'm, I'm even smelling it right now coming up from blooming and it's just it's nice it uh, it's multi-layered um, I like it uh, I am using distilled water this time that may have been part of the issue we'll see uh, last time I used my hard water from the tap uh, whip dog um, silver tip badger brush and it has been uh, soaking as well and I don't see oh okay a little bit more software witch hazel from Thayer's with the aloe vera alum block on standby I did cut myself on with this blade with the uh, with the jagger razor um, I'm working on the angle with that um, all right I think we're ready to go let me uh, rinse my face get it all wet all right so the face is dripping slinging some of the blood of the wild I'm not getting any dripping at all from the brush slung most of it off and let's just see what we can do here both the DR Harris puck that I tried a few days ago and this one were just uh, phenomenal fragrances and uh, good performers but with the uh, with the plastic bowl I just didn't quite I didn't have it dialed in now right now it's getting a little drippy um, oh, let's see you know what I didn't pour out the uh, little bit of the bloom water maybe I don't know I did while I was doing my first rinse I did take the bloom some of the bloom water and wash my face with it a little bit just a quick splash kind of get some of those oils off you know some of those some of the guys on YouTube will actually load their brush upside down to 
kind of let gravity help out a little bit. I'm getting a lot of uh, a lot of the foam as you can see, but I just want to make sure that I get good. Yeah, the fragrance is really nice. Uh, I just want to make sure I get real soap on the brush instead of just light light foam. Plus, this is distilled water, so shouldn't be any problem with hard water causing issues. I'm erring on the side of more soap than I should have it just to kind of prove the point. Who knows, maybe I'll have to jump online and ask somebody how to lather this stuff. Um, I'm just going to hope that that's okay. If it's not, maybe I just need to do more research. had the soap blooming for maybe three minutes I'm just guessing maybe it needs more time all right so right now no water in the bowl we'll just start with what we have here Smells good. Probably need to bring in some more water, but let's just crank on it a little bit more just to make sure. Need to let everything stabilize. The uh, a lot of water in the in the brush still. It has not contacted the soap. Yep, yep, see? It is getting more creamy. You gotta wait for it to equalize before you start thinking about adding water, at least in my experience. Um, in the beginning of your um, lather generation, um, give it a little while, and once it does equalize, then you can start adding water or whatever as needed but if you add water too soon then then when it uh, when that soap does eventually uh, meet up with that water that was already inside your brush to begin with then what you may end up with a is a lath that just turns thin too quickly yeah see this is looking looking nice uh, yesterday my leather did not have a sheen on it. Um, I think it was just too dry. Nice smell. And it's interesting. It's not... Uh, it's a fun smell to smell. Um, no, not fun. It's fun for me because I, I kind of revel in the... How sophisticated it is and how all the different layers of the, the scent are, are doing their jobs and so it's a good scent you get the musky things on the back kind of the back end you got some soap and floral notes uh, wish I had a better nose to describe it uh, to pick out some of the different fragrances uh, in more detail now, I usually believe that when I've got that hollow in my uh, brush that I need to add a few more drops of water. I believe I've equalized now. So all the soap that started out in this whole equation has now met with all the water. So. I'm going to turn on a, oh, you know what? We're doing distilled water, so uh, I'll try to add just a little, a little bit at a time. Obviously, once you get a good lather going and use the same soap 
on a regular basis, you can kind of get a head start with uh, estimating the right amount of water. But uh, lots of good, lots of good lather already. I'm also curious, there is a, see this decal on the outside of this bowl, there's a round version of that right inside the bowl, and it's got a slight lip on it because it's a decal. Oh, that's just good. And I wonder if that little tiny lip is actually doing some agitation for me and helping me out. Uh, all right, let's add a little bit more distilled water. Uh, maybe it's more than I wanted to add. It should maybe it'll be okay. Um, I do shave cold water. I don't like to bother with waiting for the hot to come across the house. And then also, I don't want to bother with my skin being all warm and stuff during the shave and then having to jolt it with cold. I'll just keep it cold the whole time. Okay, so how is this guy doing? Here's a big old glob. Testing out some peaks there. I think I think that's good. Let's see, let's see. You know, I was using that plastic bowl for a while, and sure, it did agitate and help me to get a lather going, but uh, maybe a minute longer. But I. I've gotten better results out of this bowl. I also don't really do the pumping thing. Um, let's see how things look here. Oh, pointy haired boss. I don't know if I should keep adding water to make it more slick. Let's take a look at the sheen not really very much of a sheen on it great smell though you know why don't we add just a couple more drops and see if we can get it to shine a little bit of course you know might thin it out Guess that's something that you just have to know about your soap. Big Look at that guy standing up right in the middle of the bowl. They have these uh, copper bowls on eBay for like ten bucks. Might be a way to go. They're kind of pebbled or, uh, you know, pinged with a hammer, something like that. So they have a texture to them. Now, let's see if I have obtained. I have no idea if I was supposed to keep adding water to get a sheen. I think I'm just going to roll with that. Nice, nice smell. Now, whatever note I just smell, I smelled just then, reminded me of Old Spice. So it must have been one of those ingredients. It's just a, there's a hint of it in there. 
you know, whatever you smelled right before something that you're smelling is very important because it will, your nose contrasts. And so if you smell something sweet and then you smell your shaving cream, it'll be very different than if you smell something savory or spicy and then you smell your shaving cream. All right. Little fella, historic piece of machinery, been around for decades. It's time to wet my face. So what I ended up doing with that boar brush yesterday when my lather was just so weak and kind of dry and thin, I, uh, Um, I put some on my face and then, oh, what a nice smell. Put some on my face and then I, uh, went, I took the kind of empty brush back to the soap and just, uh, kind of proceeded on as if I was doing a face lather, you know, and that was the boar brush, I think. Maybe as you're breaking in your poor brush, one option is to just face lather because that way you can kind of go to the putt before every time instead of trying to bowl lather. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, this is getting thicker. This is nice. See, I, this is, I got, I got here yesterday with the boar brush. But only after I mixed it up in the plastic bowl with the ridges and then put some on my face, have it be too dry, and then uh, loaded the brush back up and face lather. And I got to the same place. So I got here faster with the badger brush. And bowl, bowl lathering with a non grooved bowl. Oh, this smells good. Sure is nice. Why why do we like that so much? Why do I like that so much? Just to smell these this good stuff. This uh, this whip dog brush badger um, is also not yet broken in fully. I had his younger brother and uh, got him broken in and was super happy with him. All right, now I had this is my first use with this, uh, so let's work on determining a good angle. Okay, pretty standard, feels smooth. It's a light razor, so all my heavyweights that I I'm used to shaving with. I do like the, the weighty razors. This is not one of those. Very light. Nimble. Kind of doing a gentle with the grain pass and this is just one day of growth I was reading a blog where it was not a blog I was reading a post on reddit and he was talking about how He um, uh, found it much easier to shave when he had a three-day beard growth. He was shaving with a, uh, some different razors, like an open comb razor. And he said that the one-day growth was much more difficult. And it makes sense because the, not as much as the hair is sticking out.
opened up this a couple days ago but this little uh, razor is not aggressive enough to open it back up again so that's good it felt really good um, it felt it, it wasn't smooth like am I cutting hairs you know you were cutting hairs and so that's good because um, that's probably what I need um, you, you don't want it to be too smooth so fourth use of this blade really happy with that first pass oh yeah that's a good I'm very happy with the uh, the way it cut as well so I'm happy with the feel as well as the uh, amount of hair it, that I can see that it cut so this is one of my smallest razors the grip of course is great it's uh, checked and uh, it uh, wet or soapy no problem there um, I almost feel like I shouldn't evaluate the razor in that kind of sense because it's, a, it's so venerable. Um, I, I almost feel like, you know, you're it's like commenting on maybe how Muhammad Ali was boxing or, you know, something like that. You know, I just leave him alone because he's awesome. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, all right, I'm going to rinse and just do a little check on the face. Wow, that's a good shave. One pass not even taking too much care with it um allergy season so i keep kind of messing with my nose um i could go to work right now in an office and i don't think anybody would say anything one pass blade had been used four times it is it's no wonder people love these things a lot of people use their super speeds as a benchmark for testing new blades because they're so reliable and uh, stable, predictable, that sort of thing. Now I can see why. It was great. I, I'm going to do more passes just because I can. It's enjoyable. All right. So let us do that. Tons. Oh, that's a good smell. Okay. Here's what. It, here's one of the things that I'm really appreciating about this. You know, um, put like a sandal wood in front of me and I'll kind of do the same thing. Um, really, imp I really appreciate those kinds of smells, uh, character kind of smells like the uh, midnight stag um, from Chiseled Face, you know, um, Sherlock from Chiseled Face, uh, Peraza Red is a good sandal wood. Um, you put any of those things in front of me and I just didn't. I enjoy them, and they're, they're, they may not be too complicated, it's just a scent that I like, okay? So, let's, that could be analogous to, um, you've got a, uh, a guy playing electric guitar, and he's doing an awesome job, and you're enjoying listening to him, but he's playing kind of one instrument, and you know you like it, because that's you like that instrument but what this shaving soap is doing it's more like a, a quartet or a quintet with a couple of people in there that I normally don't like to listen to with a couple of instruments that I don't like uh, and then a couple that I do and they figured out how to play together in a way that uh, is amazing and you're enjoying it and so you're enjoying it even more because they're taking something you don't like morphing it doing something a little different with it being intelligent and purposeful about it and they end up providing you with something you really enjoy and can appreciate Cross grain. Gonna be very interested to see how how this little guy makes my Adam's apple feel. Usually he feels a little irritated, and my trouble zone here. It's 
that this, I may have said this already, that this razor is already um, really outperforming the Edwin Jagger DE89. Without question. The blade's doing well. These are a good match. It's a Gillette blade and it's a solidly made Gillette razor. This week was my first time trying the Gillette silver blue. This is a cross grain pass here. Um, just like yesterday, if I haven't, if I, like I started at first over here, and then if this has a chance to dry, there's not enough slickness to let allow me to comfortably go back and do that again, which is kind of typical, but I figured I'd mention it because there are a few out there that you could just kind of keep going back on. Um, this is not one of those soaps, uh, for my skin type at least. Uh, do rinse before the third pass. All right, just did a little inspection. This little zone right here, usually my trouble spot. It's not completely shaven, but it's great. It's well done. And that was just with, uh, what, two passes and not even thinking too much about it. Just a cross crane second pass. And that's tremendous. That is like a top 1% of the uh, razors and blades that I have been exposed to so far. Uh, so now, I'm, uh, do I even need, I do not, I didn't need to do my cheeks after the first, after the first pass. I definitely don't need to do them now, so I'm not going to worry about it. Oh, nice smell. Uh, a lot of the fragrances, you don't smell them throughout the shave. I don't know whether it's something about the fragrance that the uh, your nose gets used to it. And so sometimes you'll get used to it and sometimes you won't. Or whether it's just a matter of pungency. The strong ones you'll keep smelling and the weak ones you won't. But I do enjoy it when a good one just kind of keeps reminding you about itself throughout your shave. That is nice. So, uh, my beard, uh, up top, it's very straightforward, just straight down. Over here, it kind of comes this way. Over here, it does some weird S-curves to end up kind of going out this direction. And uh, so, uh, for a, I don't like against the grain passes, my skin doesn't really like them either. And so, I'm going to do a cross grain pass from the other direction. So would kind of be right here. Let's see how that Adam's apple hair gets treated. Oh, that's so smooth. That is crazy smooth. I might be able to do it against the grain pass with this razor. And this blade combination and maybe the lather. I mean, maybe this is a highly recommended soap for that very reason. Shoot, let's try it. Over here, this direction is not against the grain. It's still cross grain. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. Let's do a fourth pass on my neck and see if we can do an against the grain. That was so smooth. But yeah, I felt when I was cutting. But it was just nice. Oh, another thing I'm doing with this blade is I have a small bottle 
spray bottle of alcohol, 70%. And I am spraying the blade both sides with just kind of one spritz of the uh, aerosol, I mean, just the alcohol. And um, I'm wondering if it makes any difference. A lot of people online have said no, it doesn't. Uh, but I figure I'd try it and see. Um, maybe if it keeps a little bit of rust from forming on the edge of the blade, then I can get a few more shaves. Uh, when it's a cheap blade, big deal. But when it's a premium blade like Feather or something that you really enjoy, then maybe that might be worth bringing into play. I mean, because alcohol is cheap. Tiny little bottle. Where do I have it? Here we go. It was like a dollar at Walmart. I put a little, little tape to show what it is, um, and I just, ch -ch -ch. so we'll see if that's worth anything or not, it may be negligible, uh, rinse time, just to be clear, just to be clear, I am very happy with a shave and could walk away with it with no problem, but for scientific purposes, I'm willing to risk irritation to see what I get, so, a little bit of water on there. Just going to do the neck part. Now, nah, if we're doing if we're doing to do it against the grain, why don't we do do it on the cheeks too? Go for the full Monty. Well, I tell you what, nothing seems to make most of the soaps and creams I have more creamy on the face than the painting motion instead of the scrubbing. In that sense, I kind of wish I had, didn't have a goatee. You know, you guys can kind of paint across your whole face. I've kind of got to do a U-turn all the time. I don't look good without a goatee. All right. Okay, let's take a look at this soap lather. Okay, from the looks of it, I mean, obviously I've got tons. I've been I mean, I've probably made enough where I could do six or eight passes, you know, if I used a little bit less. But you can see I'm just caking it on myself because I enjoy that. Um, I don't really have a sheen, and it, it, it almost looks a little dry. Um, but as you can see, once I have it on, it is fine. It's, it's insulating me. Uh, I have enough slickness. Um, you know, maybe I will next time play with this a little bit more, add a little bit more water to try to make it more slick. This was distilled water, so, you know, hard water is not getting in the way this time. So it looks, you know, it appears a little dry, but functionally it seems to be doing well. Oh, that's nice. Okay, against the grain. I never do this. Wow. If I'd say the irritation level, I would have to say 1 out of 99. You know, it's just almost not there at all. I may slip up and be bad at this because I never do <laughs> and against the grain. So, 
you get that guy right there. Now, I have to think about it. Okay, right here against the grain is kind of like this. See if I can get the Gillette slide going on. No, this would have been against the grain right there. If only I had more shaving, shaving leather. Okay, so I'm going this way, so. Mm, felt a tiny nick right there. Okay, rinse. Now, from this corner up to this way is going to be against the grain in this area. You can feel it right there. And this is on a fourth use blade. Feeling it right there. I wonder if I need a little bit more lubrication right there. Need to watch my technique, keep my ang angles in mind because I'm not used to doing that. Feel a little bit of irritation. Wow. Okay. This is the trouble zone right here. All right. Uh, it comes down this way. So I'm going to try to angle it just a little bit so that maybe I get a little bit of a glide slicing motion instead of just attacking it at 90 degrees. Just to be safe. Feel it right there. Turns right there. I think that's it. Yeah, I'm a little nicked up, but uh, it's rinse and review. Wow. Wow. That is as close as I have ever come to baby butt smooth. I do not. I am going against the grain and feeling almost no hairs. That's the best shave I have had in my life. Super speed. Gillette. It does not have a date code, which means 1948, 1949. And uh, Gillette, what was it? Blue, silver blue. Gillette silver blue stainless. I am experiencing some irritation. Oh yeah, see the redness popping up there. So let's hit this with the alum block, which I usually don't have to do because I never try to achieve this level. Lots of little stings. 
mainly in my neck area, not on my cheek too much. <laughs> that is that is a bit bothersome. But I think it's worth it to know what could be done. Fourth use blade. Shoot, you know, it makes me want to whip out a new one, stick it in that next time and go for it again and see if maybe uh I would have less have less irritation. Of course with the Allen block. Uh, remember not to leave it wet. It is a salt. It's not the salt that we use from the table, but it's a salt, chemically speaking, from what I understand. And if you leave it in the water, it will kind of start to lose its composure and uh, dissolve. So, a lot of stinging when I have the Allen block on, but 90% of it's gone now. Not bad. I don't know. Maybe you guys who keep going, uh, who go baby butt smooth, um, maybe you guys put up with the, the stinging because you like the smoothness that you are able to achieve. Um, uh, maybe, maybe you do it every three days because your skin can't can't handle it. I'm not sure. Um, I'm sure I'll learn that information as I as I get better at this. Um, but uh, wow, letting the alum kind of sit on my skin for a little while. From what I understand, I need to go ahead and rinse that off in a little bit. Um, so, what, what, Prix de Provence, 63. Nice, kind of uh, holding it upside down under the water. So that that side soap to get out of the threads of the tin. Some people think you should let soaps dry out between uses. Not really one of those people. And gorgeous. what I'm talking about. Uh, Badger Brush did great. Generate I was is uh, the process of lather generation uh, much more resembled what I have been used to in the past with you know sterling soaps and you know just about all the other soaps that I've I've tried. So it must have just been the bore before uh, the bore brush that just wasn't broken in and maybe maybe the plastic bowl you know uh, so I, I had kind of all the bad variables in my previous shave. So this time I brought in all the good variables. The bowl I was used to, the brush I was used to, uh, soft water, and uh, uh, and then sure enough, it, it did make a difference. Um, you know, at some point I may start changing the variables to figure out which one of those was the key, but not right now. Uh, irritation down to about only 3%, so it's getting even better um, as we go. I'm going to rinse the um, alum off. Alright, that's gone. If I stay motionless, zero irritation. So, a lot of stinging before, but don't worry. Sometimes it just goes right away because the alum block does its job. Still, you can see some redness on the neck. But holy cow, my face has never been this color. It's always had the, the the little tips of the hairs showing through to darken it up a little bit. My face has never been this color in the, <laughs> since puberty. <laughs> All right. Um, so I did not end up using my witch hazel because of the uh, you know the severity. I decided to go ahead and hit the hit it with the alum. I don't need to witch hazel today and I will go ahead with all this irritation bring in my Nivea post shave balm for sensitive skin I've been enjoying that for a while but lately to try out the uh, um, witch hazel 
have not been using the aftershave balm after afterwards and it's been fine uh, my skin is not as moist you know a couple hours later this balm really does a great job of hydrating the, the skin but see I kind of have oily skin anyway and so I was thinking maybe the witch hazel be the way to go I'm being careful to kind of wipe with the grain of my hairs to reduce the agitation. Skin just soaked that right up. It's got a, got a decent little smell with it too. Like that. I love the way it's a, a good value also. Okay. Excellent. Very happy with that. I'm not even going to bother running over the, uh, the hardware again. Done it a few times already. Um, I can't think of anything else to uh, that needs to be said. So amazing. Very happy with this combination. So hey, maybe it'll bring you uh, some some close shaves as well. Take care. I will say a little bit extra. I did the uh, Old Spice aftershave sometimes. I'm just an Old Spice guy. I've got extra, I've got other stuff that I like too, but today I just felt like doing that. And sure, I got a little bit of stinging, but big deal. And uh, then it hit me that this 63, very complimentary. It's not the same fragrance at all, but it's got enough of the commonalities and nothing that is going to get in the way of Old Spice. Um, it's got some uh, some nice commonalities and so uh, very complimentary for uh, the shave of on the 63 with the soap and uh, something like a bay rum or an old spice uh, aftershave so that's a good that's a good mix too